Hello everyone, I'm Satyajit and welcome back to my channel. You are watching the Python course playlist and today's video is all about Python data structures. Now I hope you are already clear with the previous topics. If not, please go back to the videos in my playlist and study them. Links to the videos are already in the description below. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified uh, on my future videos. So let's get started. So today we shall be jumping onto the second chapter, which is uh, Python data structures. Now before understanding uh, lists, let me talk about the data structures, like what exactly are data structures. Now in this session, as I told that we will be going into the depths of uh, data structures. Now data structures are nothing but these are some kind of structures which can hold the data together. Now a data structure is a particular way of organizing data in a computer so that it can be used effectively. Now we will be covering all the four uh, built in data structures in Python. That's uh, lists, sets, tuples and dictionaries in a fair amount of depth. So today's session, or I would say this particular video would be dedicated to lists. What is list? List is a sequence of values of any type. The values in lists are called as elements or items. Now lists can hold integer values. It can hold float values. It can hold multiple data types as well. Now it can also hold a list within a list. Okay, all these kind of permutations and combinations, what are possible to create a list? We will talk about that in the practical. So list within another list is also possible and it is called as nested list. Now lists are mutable. That means we already know about the mutability a feature, right? Now mutable is nothing but we can edit data basically. It has a variable length. Lists are accessed similarly like arrays. Now the first element will be stored at the zeroth index. Now, when we were talking about the string operations, when we were trying to fetch the first character of the string, we were using string square brackets zero, right? Very similar to that, if you want to access the first element of a list, you'll have to define list square brackets zero. And all the operations like if you want to get two, two eight items, you can, you can print it like zero colon, one something like that zero colon two if you want the last item minus one all these basic operations remain same so let's try to understand more about lists so let's discuss some functions used in list so i have already created my notebook and let me write down lists okay and as i told lists are nothing but it's an ordered sequence of mixed data type now let's try to create our basic list let me name it as list int equals to and it is always used in a square bracket. Let's say 10, 20, 30, 40. Let me print the list here itself. List end. Now you can see 10, 20, 30, 40. This is quite expected, right? That a list will definitely hold uh, entities of the similar type, similar data type. Now let's try to create a list with multiple data types, maybe integer, float and string list mix equals to let's say i will create python maybe a number 10 and maybe java and let's just print it print list mix so python 10 java okay now let's create a nested list that means one of the one of the elements or more than one elements will be a list inside a list so nested list equals to, let's say, I'll use the same, I'll use the same parameters. I'll just add a new, new element to it. Maybe after Java, I will just write uh, maybe 10, 20. Okay, something like that. I hope it's correct. Yeah, should be. And let me print it. Sorry. Print nested list. Oh yeah, we can get Python, 10, Java, and a list. So this list is my fourth element. Now, if I just want to print the first element, what can I do? Python. If I want to print the last element, 
simple right it's very similar to the string operations as well now we have already seen that how the slicing happens maybe if i just want the first two elements 0 colon 2 i will see first two elements right same functionality because if you remember in string also the first character is nothing but it's your starting index 0 till 2 minus 1 index means the first index so two elements will be printed right similar to that if i just want the last two characters or the last two elements nested list minus one will it work it's not working uh, maybe minus one till my bad okay so minus three till one okay let's try to understand how concatenation works so maybe i'll just define a new list equals to maybe l plus 40 50 sorry i have my new list as this one so let, let's talk about concatenation now so what i'm doing is new list equals to my old list plus 40 50 so let's see how my new list looks like you can see so there are two different elements which has been added to this particular list so two elements has been added so we had python 10 java 10 20 four elements now we have the fifth element and the sixth element now if i want to replace a element inside it now we already know that lists are mutable right so what i will do is nested uh, sorry new list of maybe zeroth location equals to instead of python i want to replace it to something else maybe r language okay now let's try to see the list now this is how the list looks like now python should be updated with r language you can see r language right so this is basically the replacing of an element now let's try to understand how extend functionality works let's say i i'll define a new list maybe for now list one equals to maybe chemistry biology uh, maybe i'll give a year maybe 1984 comma 1999 then xyz a b c okay so let me print it out you can see so our first element is a string second element is a string third element is a list fourth element is a tuple so this is also possible okay now what is extend now if i just use list one you can see how how the list changes i will extend it with let's say five comma ten okay now i will try to print list one you can see so we had four elements one two three and four now we have two more elements added so extend functionality basically adds elements now now if i use the similar command to use the append functionality i will do append of maybe 15 20. now let's see so if i would have used extend two new elements will be created now I'm using append in append what happens is it is taking this as an entire element that's the difference between extend and append I hope you understood so append basically adds this argument as a single element to the end of a list and extend you already know that it, it treats each element separately now let's try to understand few more list operations maybe if I am just concerned about knowing the length of the list very simple it's going to be len list one so it's one two three four five six and seven if I want to find the last element of that list minus one so I'll get 15 20 let's say I want to delete the last element maybe I want to delete 15 20 so there is a command called as del function this is the function to delete it so what i will do is i will use del list one minus one 
Now again, I will print the list one. See, my last element has been deleted. And let's try to also use remove. List one dot remove. Maybe I'll pass biology. See, biology is also deleted. So in a way, delete and remove is almost similar. It, it removes entries from your lists. Okay, now let's say I want to sort a list. Now, see, Python is, as I already told you in my previous classes, Python is going to be very simple and easy to learn and pick it up. As a language, whatever operations you want to do, it's quite easy. Like if you want to do a sort operation, there will be a sort function for that. If you want to delete some element, there will be a delete operation for that. Like we have del operation. So the wordings or you can say the function names are quite easy for us to understand and memorize. Now I'll just talk about the sorting part. Let me just have a new markdown. Sorting of a, of a list. And then, so let me create a new list. Maybe A equals to uh, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, 10. So let me sort it out. Let me do it in the same cell itself. Let's say B equals to A dot sort. Obviously, if I print A, that will print me the sort operated. Okay, let me, I have just created my A, let me print it out. Now, if I want to sort it, I'll have to do it this way, A dot sort. No, so let me print it out. My bad. So once A is sorted, then we have to call our A. So that's basically sorted. That means the sort operation has been called on this particular list, right? And the list is sorted out. You can see. Now there is another operation called as sorted. So let me just also walk you through that. Maybe just I'll, again, I will just copy paste it. And let's say C equals to sorted A. Now, if I print C, now C is sorted. Now you can see the only difference between sort and sorted is that you can see this particular command. When I used the sorted command, I used sorted of list A and I'm assigning it to C, right? Now when I'm printing C, I'm able to see the sorted values. But in the same case, if I do it with with the sort command, let's say I will do a of a equals to this, b equals to a dot sort. Now, if I print b, it will not print anything. So the basic difference I would say in easier terms that uh, the sort function basically modifies the list it is called on. Because uh, when you are calling it on a, it automatically sorts the a. You don't have to store that value somewhere. Okay, you just have to simply call the sort function to get it sorted. And similarly, the sorted function will create a new list containing a sorted version of the list. Now, when it creates a new list, you have to save this new list in a new variable. That is the reason we have used C equals to this. That means it is storing the output of sorted A in C. That is the reason you are able to see the value. So that, that is the only difference between sort and sorted. Now you can use it, like you can use any of them as per your needs in the code. Uh, so I think that's it for the lists. Maybe the next session will be more interesting because we will jump into tuple sets and dictionaries. And we'll also try to understand what is the basic difference between lists and tuples and sets together. So that's it for uh, this video, guys. Thank you.